I just released my updated 2025 shelf for Houdini and it comes with six tools. So let's take a look at what they are and what they can do. So this shelf is available on Patreon and Gumroad. If you'd like to grab it on there, you can. If you're already a member of the Vision and Illusion tiers on Patreon, then you already have access to this. But if you wanna grab it, you can grab it on Patreon as well. Uh, so let's take a look at the six tools here. So some of them we have already had in the past and some of them we've just updated, added some more. So let's take a look at what they are. I'm also gonna show how we can bind some hotkeys to them because I haven't done that yet and I wanted to, and it's also something that I figure people are gonna wanna do. So to start off, we have this connect node tool. So let's drop down a, just a soft create here and let's dive inside. Let's drop down just some nodes here. So we're gonna drop down a box, we're gonna drop down an attribute wrangle and that's really all that we need. So let's say that we have this box and we want to connect it to this attribute wrangle, but we forgot when we drop down this attribute wrangle to hold shift and enter to automatically connect them. If we have this box selected, we can we can click on this connect nodes, and then the next tool that we select or the next node that we select, it's gonna automatically wire those up. Now, if I select the box again and I click this again, and I reselect our attribute wrangle, it's gonna wire that into the next available input for us. So if you don't have anything selected, we will have to select both uh, both nodes, so we'll need to select their box first and then the attribute wrangle. But I see this being most useful for when you forget to, you know, put in um, the shift and enter when you're dropping down a node, or maybe you just want to connect something to the second input. You don't have to like fiddle around, try and grab that and get it into the right input. You just select that little hotkey or whatever this on your shelf and then you can connect them up. So let's go ahead and assign a hotkey because I haven't actually done this. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do edit tool. I'm gonna come to hotkeys and then we can come to this network pane one. Let's click on edit. And then you can see all of the different hotkeys that we have available here. So these ones in gray, these light gray ones are the ones that are not actually bound to anything right now. So I'm gonna select this network editor and then we have this connect nodes. And let's say we wanted to just bind it to this key, for example, we can click on that. You can see no actions are assigned. If I click on one of these other ones, you can see what that's being assigned to. And let's go ahead and click this add reference. Actually, sorry, not that, double click. And then we can select the key that we want. So we just bound it to that, that key right there. Now you can see if I click on this, you can see assigned to connect nodes. And I can click apply and accept here. And I can accept here. And now if I select our box here, we hit that hotkey and select the attribute wrangle to automatically connect those up for us. So pretty nice there. And then we have our color picker. So if I press C in our network view here, you can see, oh, I already have it unbound. So we'll have to redo this. But normally if you have uh, the C key bound by default in Houdini, it's gonna bring up this little pane here. I don't really like this color picker, so I made another one. So again, I'm gonna come to this hotkeys, click edit, and let's just select our network editor, double click, I'm gonna press C, and let's just remove that other. Now we can, oops, we want to add that back, there we go. Line accept, and now if I go ahead and press C, it's gonna bring up this color picker that we can save things to. We can select whichever one we want. If we wanna do multiple nodes at a time, we can do that if we want as well. So I personally prefer that color picker, that's why I made it. Then we have a, another tool here that's called Cycle Inputs. This is going to move your first connected input to the next available, or the next input. So it will disconnect things if you have you know multiple in there. Um, so that is kind of how it works because there is a hotkey to actually, you know, just swap the the inputs, um, but I wanted to have this actually move the input to the next input. That way, you have uh, another option for you know cycling your inputs. I also have a node here for, or sorry, a tool here for duplicating your nodes. So you can just click on that, select whatever node that you want first, and then click on that, and we can duplicate this. Say five times, I hit enter, and you can see if I press L. It's going to lay out all those and we have created now five copies of that attribute wrangle for us. So nothing too complex there, uh, just a little 
duplication script makes it nice for when you need to, you know, create multiple copies of things. Not super common that you need to do that, but sometimes it's nice to have that. Then we have a toggle common script. This one I, I made for free on Patreon and um, I think I released it on Gumroad as well. Um, but it is available for free and it just toggles node comments. So if I right click on a node here, I click edit comment and I chive something in here. And I click accept. See we have this little icon here next to our node. So if I click on this, it's going to just toggle those on. And if I click it again, it'll toggle them back off. This does this on a project wide basis. So if you have a ton of different nodes, then you can just toggle them all on at once. Um, super useful for things like recipes. It's actually what it was requested for on my Patreon and, and through Discord, it was asked if there was a way to do this and pretty, pretty quick and easy to set up. So I just went ahead and made that script for them and just made it available as part of this as well for anybody that, uh, that wants it. And then the last thing we're going to need to select our box again, and then we can select this parameter randomizer. This is gonna bring up a UI here that gives us access to all of the number parameters that are visible on our node. And we can randomize whatever we want based off of the settings that we have set down here. So we have this uniform scale. Let's go ahead and just check that. This is gonna be just a single singular float value. And if we want to set this to something between, let's say one and 10, we can make sure that this is an integer just by setting this to zero. And I can select randomize selected. You can see that that sets a uniform scale there to some random value. If I keep clicking it, it's gonna to continue to randomize that. If I set this to have some decimal places, you can see if I click it now, it's gonna give us that many decimal places. So we can set it to whatever we want, really get some fine tuned control over kind of how many like decimal places you want to go, how, you know, whether you want it to be an integer or float value, and then as well as, you know, what our values want. So let's say we wanted to randomize the rotation. We can select individual axes here or axes and randomize them on a per axis basis, or we can select this randomize all. And that's going to toggle on all of our different checkboxes there. So let's set this between zero and 360. And now if I select just randomize that, that's going to give us a random value for all of these and we can get some random rotations on there. And then let's say we wanted to drop down like maybe a mountain node. Now we have some different settings here. We can continue to randomize that and it's going to just randomize the rotation for whatever values that we had set um, for our last node, but we want to have access to our mountain node. Now we can click on this update parameter list. Now it's going to bring us all of our different parameters here. So we could randomize the amplitude maybe between, I don't know, 0.5 and three. And we get some random values. It would make more sense if we had some more subdivisions there. And now you can see we get some different values there. So what you're seeing here is actually the label of the parameter as well as the actual internal label. So if I click on this edit parameter interface, you can see we have, if I were to find the amplitude, you can see that we have this label and then the name here, maybe one like um, octaves. If we look at that, we see we have the label is the max octaves and the internal name for that is going to be octaves. So that allows you to just dial in which one you actually want to select because there are some nodes that you'll see in Houdini that have you know multiple you know transforms or whatever, multiple positions. So being able to see the actual internal names can help you select the right one. So if you hover over an attribute here, let's say, our amplitude, you can see what that internal parameter name is. So that's the amplitude that we see right there as well. So that is a quick overview of the shelf and what all you can do with it, as well as how you can go about assigning hotkeys for these things. Really, really like some of these things. They're gonna be super useful, especially that connect node script. That's something I always seem to forget is hit shift and enter when dropping down nodes to connect them up. And it's kind of a pain in the butt to 
select your inputs into your outputs and make sure that they all line up correctly. So anyways, like I said, this is available on Patreon and Gumroad. If you want to download it on there, you can. And it's already available to everybody that is of the vision and uh, illusion tiers on Patreon. So you can get that for free on there if you're one of those level of patrons. You also get a whole bunch of other things as being part of my Patreon. And uh, you get all the project files and stuff as well for all of my videos, which in my opinion is quite the value. So there is a whole bunch, like 200 plus now. So lots of different things that you get with that. And you can learn a lot um, with those project files as well. So jump on there if you're interested. The links will be in the description. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.